Uh, look at Palm Sunday. Mm. We've been there hundreds of times. We've visited it hundreds of times. Uh, but I want you to realize that it's really a message that what was happening that day, the king was coming. Hey, the king is coming. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Would somebody recognize Woo. that the king is coming? Yes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, riding upon an ass, upon the coat, the foal of an ass. Jesus has been involved in ministry now for three and a half years. There have been miracles and wonders and signs of all kinds done by him. When he attended a funeral, it, it, it turned out being a resurrection, or, or at least a raising from the dead. Uh, when a funeral procession passed by him one day, the mother, a widow, was crying over her only child. Jesus just stepped in and raised him up right there as they went by. And Jairus, who they come and said, quit troubling the master. Uh, you know, uh, he's busy. Don't be bothering him. Your daughter's dead. And he went in and did what he did best. He is a miracle worker. Ooh, yes. But he is coming. Yes, he's coming in might. He's coming in power. The word of God says God gave him a name that's above every name. That the name of Jesus was to be things in heaven, things in earth, the things under the earth. That every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. If you believe that this morning, you ought to praise him. You yes. ought to give him yes. glory because he is Hallelujah. who the word of God praise says he is. Amen. Amen. But for one brief moment, for one brief moment, he kind of rolled back that robe of flesh and allowed them to see his deity. They had never comprehended who he was that day. I'll admit to you that a lot of them in the crowd that were saying Hosanna uh, weren't saying it because they were worshiping him. They thought he was setting up an earthly kingdom and they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to be a a part of his government or part of his rule and a part of his reign. Let's go to Luke uh, 19, 29. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh. And this is the fulfillment of that prophecy that was given in Zacharias. Cometh to thee, he is just, and having salvation, lowly riding upon an ass, upon the coat, the foal of an ass. And it came to pass when he was come near to Bethany, and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye over into a village over against you, in the which uh, at your entering you shall find a coat tied whereon never a man set, loose him and bring him thither. I have mentioned it to you before, I'll mention it again. Go stand on the corner today when somebody comes by and says, Hey, I need your car. They think right. they're carjacking. But the, the Lord wasn't carjacking that day. He wasn't holding up anybody. The Lord had already went before him and prepared the way with the owner, and he willingly gave it. I don't know who this owner was, but anyway, he willingly gave and allowed this coat, the foal of an ass, be. he'd never been ridden upon. By the way, do you know that every time a new king took his throne, they put him on a coat on the foal of an ass, and the way they knew that Solomon was David's choice was that David had him go get his coat and ride Solomon through. And everybody said, well, it ain't uh, these other sons. Right. It's not any of them. It's Solomon because he's riding on that coat, the pole of an ass. He was brought in that day. It was God's way of confirming. Your king is coming. Amen. Are you ready for your king yeah. as his coming? Amen. Amen. If any man asks you, why do you lose him? Thus say you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. You know, it would be a good thing for you to examine your life today. I think something is happening right now that most people don't even realize. If you watch, uh, ever watch the boxing match, a, a boxer will measure his opponent. He'll throw out a few punches just to see where he's at, and when he gets him right where he wants him, he clobbers him. Mm -hmm. I believe the church is being measured right now. Yep. I believe we're being put to the test and and the devil has found out that 
through this virus, he's been able to accomplish what he's been trying to accomplish for years on end. Break up the church. Uh, communism couldn't force the church out. They went ahead and had church. Right. And all the times they banned the Bible and they fought against the church, the church has prevailed. May I remind you today that even this thing, the Lord said, the gates of hell shall not prevail That's against right. this church. Hallelujah. But this church is still going to be all right all powerful and ruling and reign regardless of adverse circumstances. I thought back over my life here this week and I thought about all the bad situations health-wise we've been through. In 1945, three years before I was born, my aunt and uncle showed up at my mother's house and there wasn't no text to send her a text they were coming. They didn't call her because they didn't have no money. But they showed up and said, we've all got tuberculosis. Could we stay here? Well, tuberculosis was the deadly plague yes, of the day. Yes. As a matter of fact, when I was a boy, they had TB hospitals yes. all over the country. They're, they're used for something else today because we conquered that. But anyway, folks from the island usually test positive for TB, not because they got TB, but because the antibody is there that, that is so prevalent in those places. But TB was kind of wiped out. Then when I was a, in about the first grade, polio was raped in the land. People in iron lungs, and, and an iron lung worked by creating a negative pressure that pulled your chest up and made you breathe. And it wasn't a visit once a week, it was a lifetime that they were put in that. And if anybody come out of it, they were uh, paralyzed in some limb or many limbs, and we got through that. And you know, AIDS come along, and we thought it was going to wipe out the planet, but uh, they seem to be conquering that at some point. It's still around. And I want to tell you that no matter what this thing is, you know, an enemy you can't see is a hard enemy to fight. No matter what it is, uh, any enemy that you can see or cannot see can be uh, conquered in prayer. And the God that I serve, let me tell you the worst thing it could do to me. Now, I'm not flirting with it. I'm not, I, I ask you to always be careful. Keep your social distance. Do all, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Use all the hand sanitizer you can. Do whatever you can to keep yourself protected. Wear a mask if you want to. We were in Sam's Club parking lot the other day, and at least a thousand people went in and out of that store while we were sitting there. Four of them had a mask on. You do what you want to as far as that's concerned, and, and make up your own mind about what you're going to do. But here's one thing that you need to know. The worst thing he can do to you is kill you. Yep. <laughs> That's the worst. And Jesus said, don't worry about that one that can kill the body. Worry about yes. them that after he's killed the yes. body, he has the soul yes. in the hell fire. Yes. So keep yourself right with God. Right. And don't live in fear and don't live in doubt. And don't worry about it. Don't flirt with it. Don't play with it. Don't, don't act like it doesn't exist. But use common sense Hello. And, and recognize that sin is in the world. Because sin is in the world, disease runs rampant. Yes. My wife didn't catch cancer, but she got cancer. Mm -hmm. you know, it, as far as I know, it's not contagious. We may find out someday it is. If it is, well, I'm next. But anyway, uh, I want you to know that disease is all around us. I want you to know that uh, aging takes place. I wake up every morning and say, well, is this an Advil day or is my knees gonna loosen up after a while? If I move around a little while, they loosen up. I'm able to get about and do the things I need to do. Let me tell you, if God be for you, who can be against if God be for you, yeah. it doesn't matter who's against you or yeah. what's against yeah. you, when everything in this world seems to be opposed. Let me tell you, the king is coming. Yeah. But let me tell you, before the king comes, a man called the Antichrist is going to come. He's going to be everything that the world wants. As a matter of fact, the Antichrist is going to set up his kingdom during a time just like what we're going through. That's right. One of the things that the Antichrist will do is cause craft to prosper or commerce or business. And he's going to come when there's an economic downturn. Another time he's going to come is when a war breaks out in the Middle East and, and the revived Russia, the one that has come back to its homeland May the 17th, 1948, will be invaded by a mass army that is described in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And when that army goes down to invade Israel and before the Antichrist can set up his kingdom, 
Here's what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to give you another comforter. Mm -hmm. That shall abide with you forever. And let me tell you, if he's going to abide with me forever, wherever the Holy Ghost is, then that's where I'm going to be. Amen. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter says, The mystery of iniquity hath already worked only he who now let will let till he be taken out of the way. Or that one that hindered is what led me. And what is hindering the Antichrist from setting up his kingdom is not the world's situation. Uh -uh. It's not the nations being hungry for somebody that will lead them out of these problems. It's not because the world's not looking for somebody to solve its economic problems and its health problems. It's because the Holy Ghost is dwelling in the body of Christ. And one of these days, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the Lord himself going to descend with a shout and the voice of an archangel the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And we which are alive and remaining yes. shall be caught up together with him in the air. Amen. Yeah, the beginning that. of the 70th week of Daniel which precedes the Lord coming back on that white horse that Tim was talking about. The beginning of the 70th week of Daniel isn't necessarily when the church is raptured out of here. It's when the Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel for seven years. When he, and in the middle of those seven years, he breaks that covenant. And he sets himself up in the newly rebuilt temple in Jerusalem, proclaiming that he is God and demands to be worshipped. You might think something is so ridiculous that has never happened, but you look through history. Caesar used to have statues all over. Yep, of him. And remember Nebuchadnezzar built a statue and said, you got to bow to that statue. Hey, I like what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said. We're not careful to answer you, old king. The God that we serve is well able. Hallelujah. But Amen. If, not, if this thing takes me out of here, I'm going to leave this That's world right. dead anyway. Amen. Amen. And I'll be alive in Jesus. The yes, moment I hit the body. ground, I'll be in the arms of Jesus. Be absent with the body and be present with the Lord. Amen. 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 And they went, they that were sent went their way and found as he had said unto them. Let me tell you, whatever he's told you, if you'll obey it, it'll always be that way. Yes. The Lord always goes before you. Amen. And prepares the way. If you'll learn to lean, not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. Matter of fact, the Holy Ghost was sent to lead you into all truth. Sometimes we think he was only here for us to speak in tongues or to prophesy or to do miracles. He's here to guide your footsteps, yes. to yes. help you to order your footsteps, to help you live right and do right. The grace of God that brings us salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. God's coming for a church, a church without spot and a church without wrinkle. A church that has separated itself from the world and from the things of the world and fell in love with him to a point that nothing else mattered, just pleasing him. Amen. And they said, the Lord hath need of them. We went through that. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the coat. And they said, Jesus, their own. Here he is. Get ready to make his descents and come into that city. And as they went, they spread their clothes in yes. the way. They recognized the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Even though it was a brief moment, they recognized him finally as who he was. Some of them were just along because the crowd was there. A lot of people do things because the crowd does yeah. things. Some people's faith is being tested right now. You remember Jesus talked about some of the seed fell on shallow ground. Mm -hmm. And when trouble come along, they lost out. I'm going to tell you, a lot of people are going to lose out with God during this time. That's right. They've already separated themselves. They've already decided to, that maybe God's not what he said he was. I'm telling you, he's everything he said he was. Yes. And, yes. Yes. and you can count on God. I'm telling you, hold fast your profession of faith without wavering. I'm telling you, don't turn to the right or to the left and observe and do all he's commanding. I'm telling you, the word of God will be fulfilled. And if you're not ready and you're not right, when the Lord descends, you're not going. And if you're left behind, well, we just saw how easy it'll be for the Antichrist. When he tells you you can't buy and sell, you can't go to the grocery store, and you can't buy medicine, and you can't do anything. As a matter of fact, Susan heard them say the other day, that they're thinking about doing away with cash because it, uh -huh. uh, 
is so contagious with this and give everybody a chip in their hand with their own identity on it. Uh, I'm not buying in to let you know. Nope. And when they would come nigh even now to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Let me tell you, is there anybody that out there listening today that has ever been through a storm or been through a trial? It'd be a good time to look back and say, Now, Lord, you was there then. Yes. Yep. You remember David when he was facing that giant? And you may be facing your giant today, maybe an economic giant, maybe a health giant, maybe some other kind of giant. When he was facing that giant that day, he said, I remember the lion, mm -hmm. and I remember the bear. And I don't believe this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be any different than lion and bear. What was a common denominator? God was with him then, yes. and God was with him now. Amen. Remember when uh, Caleb, after 45 years, come back to the mountain that God had prom promised him. He never lost sight of the promise. He never lost hope of the promise. He never doubted one moment that God would do what he said he would do. He said, when I was here the first time, my brother brought an evil report, and the people's heart melted, and they were afraid to go in. But he said, we're here now, and I'm telling you, give me my mountain. Let me tell you, claim your mountain today. Whatever God promised to you, whatever God said to you. You know what? I'm not seeking an earthly kingdom. I'm not laying up moth where the treasure, where the moth can corrupt, the thieves can break through and steal. I'm laying up treasures where they can't get to it. I'm putting and investing myself in the hope of my calling, right. in, in the fact that I'm a, a sort of a risen Savior, that He's alive forevermore, and He has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Amen. They begin to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice because of the mighty works they've seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. That was a saying that was said at his birth. Uh, and he is the Prince of Peace. Uh, there's never going to be true peace on this earth till the Prince of Peace sets up his kingdom. After the rapture of the church, and after the 70th week of Daniel is fulfilled, the Lord's coming back riding on that white horse. Uh, and the armies of heaven are going to follow him and he's going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years and when the thousand years has expired the heavens are going to be rolled up like a scroll and the earth's going to melt away with a fervent heat and Peter said seeing that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of people ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't try to keep right. up with anybody. Make sure that you're keeping your account with him up to date. Amen. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. You know, this world doesn't want us praising God. They'd like us just to keep it to ourselves. They'd like us to just hide in a closet somewhere and do our worship in private. Don't force it on me. I know a man that said, I'm not going to force my children to go to church uh, because I was forced when I was a kid and I'm not going to force them. Well, let me tell you about his children today. When he died, he left a large sum of money to his wife and before his wife died, it had all gone. Every bit of it, had, she was left with very little, almost destitute and probably in the neighborhood of $2 million at the time. And now our children are fussing and fighting with one another and almost falling out with one another totally. They may speak occasionally because they felt like one got more than the other one got and they've been worrying over it. It would have been a whole lot better if he have gave them a heritage to knowing where he stood with God. Yes and that he had a relationship with God. Matter of fact, the Word of God told the children of Israel, he said, you ought to, this is the way you ought to train your children. You ought to talk about it when you get up in the morning. Amen. You ought to talk about it when you go along in the day. You ought to talk about it when you lay down at night. You ought to put signs all over your house yes. that proclaim the glory of the Lord. Let me tell you, if you're not doing that, and in your house proclaim the glory of the Lord. The King is coming. Amen. And He's coming for you, and He's coming for me, and I'm ready. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. I don't have a suicide wish. I'll, I'm willing to stay. I'm kind of like Paul. I'm in a straight between the two. I'd like to go home today. But I'm willing to stay until he's done with me. And, and, and when he's done with me, I'd ask him, just take me on out of here. I don't, I don't 
desire anything this world has to offer. I'm thankful for everything I have, but it's not my desire. And he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Uh, I heard a fellow preach a sermon one time about hallelujah. He said, when you see the trees out there blowing in the breeze, they're saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When you see the stars and the moon, David said, when I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mine with him, or the son of man that thou visited him? You made him a little lower than the angels, but you crowned him with glory and honor and made him have dominion over all the work of thy fingers. And there's more to it, but anyway, he was amazed at the handiwork of God. Yep. When I got saved, all of a sudden I could see God. I never saw him in a physical form, but I could see him in the grass, the trees, the flowers. And let me tell you, when you see God the most is when you see somebody pray through the old time salvation, you watch the revolution that takes place in their life. Amen. When the light comes on, when he calls you out of darkness into his marvelous light, and when you come to the realization that you've sinned and come short of his glory and you need a savior, and when you claim him as your Lord and claim him as your savior, the old song says, since Jesus come back. Oh, what a difference since Jesus come back. Amen. And when he was coming out nigh, he beheld the city and wept over it. He cried over Jerusalem. Why? Well, he cried, saying, if thou had known even thou in the, in, in, in the well, at least in this day, the things which belong to thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Mm. He knew what was before them. He knew that because of their transgression, because of their rejection of God's plan, rejection of Jesus as the Messiah, uh, that Israel had some history that they were going to have to go through the 70 weeks of Daniel. 69 of them would be fulfilled when Jesus was crucified, but one of them would still be hanging out there in the future. And in between those period of time is what we call the church age. It's, it's when the church was born and, and whosoever will, Jews and Gentiles alike, could come to Jesus freely. Uh, he opened up that fountain for all. Amen. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. Israel has been at war ever since the day it was recreated in 1948. It had been scattered among the nations. The 37th uh, chapter of Ezekiel described it as a valley full of dry bones. Yeah. It didn't look like they could ever live again. He asked the prophet, can these bones live again? And he said, thou knowest. But let me tell you, they did live again. And they haven't all turned to the Lord yet, but they will. And the 70th week of Daniel is to bring them to repentance and yes. bring them to that place. And when Jesus comes back and rules and reigns from Jerusalem <coughs> and this earth is transformed, recreated, the lion will lay down for the lamb. Uh, it'll be like it was in the Garden of Eden days, but in a thousand years it's going to go away. The devil's going to be bound during that time. But at the end of that season, it says he's loose from the bottomless pit for a short season. And as many as the sands of the sea are deceived. Yep. So you can be deceived. Yeah. Matter of fact, the word of God tells us before the king comes in the last days, there'll come a falling away. Yep. People will lose out with God. They'll lose their faith. As a matter of fact, there are a multitude of people who call themselves Christians who are not born again. And except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. It's not 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 get to go there. You can't even see it. You won't be a part of it. And I'm here to tell you whatever's in your life that's hindering you from a right relationship with God, I'm calling on heaven and earth right now to convict you and bring you to that point where you know that you know that you know that you stand in a right relationship with God. They'll lay thee even with the grain. Thy children within thee they shall not leave one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. In 70 AD, Titus and the Roman army come in and plowed Jerusalem under. Not one stone was left upon another. But most prophecies have a double meaning. And, 
And I think we'll visit this again somewhere down the line. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought. I hate to tell you this, and you already know it if you'll open your eyes, there's a lot of people making merchandise of the gospel. They're trying to use the gospel as a way to profit. They're trying to build their own kingdom. Matter of fact, I heard a story of one evangelist who gathered a group of ministers together and said, man, we've got to do something. I've got to do something. I gotta, I gotta do something to make people remember me. My, my, they're gonna forget who I am if I don't do something. And uh, what they actually done was created a university and built a tower and dedicated it to his name. You know what? If you stand before God and say, I know Larry Lynn, it won't get you in. That's right. You can say, I knew Donald Trump, and it won't get you in. Or I know Joe Biden, and it won't get you in. But if you know Jesus. Hallelujah. He knows that you know Jesus. Why? Because your name will be recorded in the official Amen. books of heaven. Amen. The Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. There's a record there of my salvation. Yes. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to take my word for it. But let me tell you, heaven knows who I am, and the devil knows who I am. Oh, yeah. And you know what he's looking for? He's measuring the church right now. Yeah. He's seeing who will flip. Mm -hmm. He's seeing who is easily pushed away. Yeah. He's finding out what it would take to get you to give up your faith. Mm -hmm. He's finding out what it would take to get you to back up or back down or, or not stand for what you know you believe in. I'm kind of like Joshua has for me in my house. Right. We're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Saying unto them, it is written, my house is a house, house of prayer. Of prayer. Mm -hmm. But you've made it a den of thieves. And I hate to tell you that. Matter of fact, we were warned about it. We knew it long before it ever happened. Peter said there would be clouds without water. Mm -hmm. oh they would speak great swelling words. Lord, they'll tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll flatter you. You know what the Word of God says? Beware of flattering lips. Jesus said beware when all men say good things about you. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't need to try to be controversial. If you stand for God, you're controversial. Whether you want to be or not. And, and you just realize that this world's against you. It's not yep. for you. Amen. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. You know what? This is not a time for compromise. Come on. That's it. Oh. It's Come not on. a time for back it up. That's it, true. It's not a time for, for watering the gospel down. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. It, it hurts my heart to say this, but you know, in 1935, public school was born. And ever since then, they've been dumbing down education. Uh, matter of fact, some, some school systems don't even use grades anymore. Whatever you do is okay. You do this and you do that. We graduate kids from high school that can't even read above a third grade level. Well, I'm not here to pick on educators. Thank you for what you do, educators. Thank you for all those that work in it. But I'm gonna tell you that the educational level, uh, especially the United States, has been dumbed down. It has been brought, uh, been compromised. I'm telling you the Word of God needs to be studied. He said, study to show yourself approved. Workmen that need us not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He also said, all scripture is given by the inspiration or by the breath of God. Amen. It's profitable for doctrine. Yep. It's profitable for reproof. Have you ever had it reproved? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Have you ever had it correct you? He said, yes. it's proper correction. Yes, it's, I've heard people say, well, I don't believe in doctrine. Well, do you believe in God? Yeah. Well, that's doctrine. Mm -hmm. uh, you believe the gospel is the word of God? Yeah. Well, that's doctrine. Yep. Let me tell you, I believe the whole book right there the yeah. It's doctrine for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in life that the man or woman of God might be thoroughly furnished, complete, or, or mature to every good works. God wants you to grow up. God don't want you to be a child forever. Nope. God don't want you to be a whiner. He wants you to be a winner. He wants you to proclaim the liberty that's in Christ regardless of what's going on around about you. 
I can't imagine serving in World War One, World War II. When I was a young boy, I wanted to go to Vietnam. I, I was so cocky that I thought if I went, I could straighten the whole thing out. In 30 days. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, they didn't want me. They said, you're a reject, go home. So I didn't get to go. And I'm probably glad on this end I didn't. We've got young men on foreign soil today fighting and sometimes we wonder why. But anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is you're in the army of the Lord. Yes. And the, the battle is never going to end yes. until we're taken out of this world. We've got to fight the fight of faith. Yes. The Apostle Paul said the time of my departure is at hand. He knew he was going. He knew his course was about over. One time, people were telling him, Oh, Paul, don't go up to Jerusalem. You go up there, they're going to kill you. They're going to bind you. They're going to they're gonna do bad things to you, Paul. Don't go. He said, None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear that I might finish my course. Are you determined today? Are you determined to finish your course? Are you Amen. determined to wait it out? and wade through whatever you got to wade through and fight through whatever you got to fight through and hear him say, well done, good and faithful yes, servant. Lord. Paul said, I fought the fight, yes. but I kept the faith. That's right. That's right. And he said, henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to be only, but to all those who love his appearing. Are you looking for Jesus? Yeah. Are you looking for your king to come? Are you living like you might show up any moment? When I was a boy, I don't remember who sung it. I think Red Foley sung it, as a matter of fact. And it said, if Jesus come to your house today, would you have to put away the magazines? Right. Would you have to clean up things in the house that you wouldn't want him to see? And if he just happened to stop by on that occasion, would you be ready? Right. I'm going to ask you, have you examined your own heart? Mm. Have you searched your own heart? If you're watching us on Facebook today, right where you're at, in the circumstance you're living in, would you take a moment and search your own heart and ask God, if you not where you need to be, ask Him to get you there. Here's what you do. You tell the Lord, I know I've sinned, and come short of your glory. You know what we all have in common here today? Everybody has sinned and come short of His glory. Amen. Out there. That's right have sinned and come short of his glory. But if you'll call on him, mm. whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord can be saved. If you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you can be saved. It's, it's, it's to you, it's available to you. There's not a bunch of hoops to go through. All you gotta do is call on the name of the Lord and then he'll guide you in those other steps. He'll teach you what you ought to do. He'll show you what you ought to do. You know, you can belong to this church and that won't save you. You can be baptized in every frog pond until the tadpole know you by name, and that won't save you. But if you're willing and obedient, you can eat the good of the Lamb. Amen. If you're willing to admit that you know you've sinned and come short of His glory, then God will help you. And God will bring you to that place that He wants you to be. Thank you for paying attention to this, but leave here today knowing what I've told you. The King is coming. The King is coming. And he's coming for a church mm -hmm. without spot and without wrinkle. That's right. Are you ready? Are you ready? That's what you have to ask yourself. You can't ask nobody else. You've got to ask yourself that question.